I've been asked several times as a pastor why we have baptism and confirmation at different times. Aren't they always supposed to be together? Well, sometimes they are in our tradition. And we have folks that, that are baptized and confirmed all at the same time. We don't believe that they always have to be. That there can be a place in time where we're baptized as an infant and we're raised in the faith until we come to that point in time when we confirm it. Because infant baptism does not take away the responsibility of an individual to claim and to make strong for themselves that faith. The promises that were made on their behalf by their parents and by a church that raised them in the faith until they got to the point where they said, it's not my mom's faith anymore. It's not my preacher's faith. It's not my Sunday school teacher's faith. It's, it's mine. I want to confirm. I want to make strong my commitment to live for Jesus Christ. So baptism and confirmation must always be together in one life, but not always together at the same point in time. It's important that we claim for ourselves the faith and the life that Jesus is giving to us. Uh, this time it's just my privilege and honor to bring to uh, the pulpit area our two confirmands and Reverend Diane Boyer, who is going to preside over the confirmation of our two young men this morning. I just want to say this morning that teaching Alex and Christian in confirmation class has been a highlight of my ministry. It has truly been a highlight of my ministry. And I've worked with young people uh, since I've been an adult in the church, uh, probably over 40 years before I went into the ministry, I worked with young people as a lay person. And I have, these are the, these, these two young men are outstanding. And I mean that with all my heart. They have been um, very attentive respectful and very engaged in the class at no time did I feel that they were not listening or they were not interested they had things to share and that was just so rewarding to me when I was pastoring in Lebanon I had four young ladies that were confirmed and baptized and um, it was a joy to teach them. It was a joy to teach them. But I want to tell you, these guys right here have truly been a blessing to me and an encouragement to me in my Christian life. I want to tell you a little bit about what we study and what we talk about in confirmation. We talk about the basic beliefs of the church of the Christian church and the basic beliefs of the Methodist church are the beliefs of the Christian church. We talked about our belief in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we explored each aspect of the Trinity and talked about how they are important in our lives. In fact, we talked about the entire Apostle Creed as we say it every Sunday, what we're saying when we say it, and what it means. We talked especially about the liturgy of the communion and how the communion service is a special service to honor Jesus. And I had never thought about that before. That was something, a new thought for me. Uh, we honor Father, Son, and I. But the communion service is a special service to honor Jesus and his sacrifice for us. We talked about baptism and what it means. And Alex was baptized as a, a baby and Christian as a younger child. We talked about why we as Methodists baptize young 
children and babies. We are putting them in the care of the church to rear them in the Christian faith. And the confirmation class teaches them uh, and allows them to examine their belief. And I want to say to you, church, both of these young men have a testimony for Jesus Christ. I have no doubt in my mind that they know what they're talking about, that they've experienced that experience of repentance, and it's real to them. Um, we talked about how this, the uh, scripture is the basis for all of our Methodist beliefs. Um, we also studied a little bit about the life of John Wesley and how his ministry provided the um, foundation for our denomination and many of the things that we value today, such as social justice. Um, we talked about how we strengthen our spiritual life through prayer, Bible study, and attending worship regularly. Also about how each believer receives gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you know these gifts that these guys already have. Because at their young age, they can already speak before the congregation. They participate in the worship service. They are already an important part of our church. We talked about how our church binds us all together as believers. As they are confirmed today, they are becoming full members of the church. And this does not mean that they were not already a part of us. But this just kind of makes it official. Um, so I'm going to let each one of them share something with you today, and then we'll go into the confirmation service. Today I'm going to be talking about the David and Goliath story and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There was a nine-foot-tall giant named Goliath. He wanted to fight the Israelites and make them serve as God and be servants. David heard him shouting, shouting and decided he would fight him. Even though David was small, he felt with God on his side he could defeat the giant man, Goliath. With a sling and a rock, he hit him in the forehead and then killed him. David became successful. The king built a 90-foot-tall gold statue and made everyone bow down and worship it when they heard the music. If they didn't, they died in the fiery furnace. Someone told the king that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not worship it. So the king had soldiers tie them up and throw them in the fiery furnace at seven times, seven times hotter than usual. When the soldiers threw them into the furnace, the soldiers died. The, the king saw four people walking around the untied in the furnace. He got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out and saw they were not harmed. God had sent an angel to protect them. The king was changed and praised the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and made a decree that no one was to say anything against their God. If we trust and worship God, we can get through anything. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank Reverend Boyer for teaching us about further about our faith and our church. And I wanted to thank the congregation for further welcoming me formally into their church. So thank you guys for that. And I wanted to talk a little bit about faith because faith is very important um, in the church of God. Um, without faith, with faith, you can do you can do anything. With prayer, you can accomplish anything. I wanted to, I wanted to talk about with Jesus Christ, you can do anything. With Jesus by your side, you can accomplish anything you anything you can dream of because he is the almighty he is all powerful and he is the son of god 
Okay, church, you're getting two very good members. And you know what? These young people are going to be the future. And we need to pray for God to send more young people here. Because guess what? I've seen many churches go under. But if we have strong young people that are well taught, the church will continue. Okay, I'm speaking to Alex and Christian. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Well. All right, now, church, this is addressed to you. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayer, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Members of the household of God, I commend to you these persons to your love and care to do all in your power to increase their faith confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and into the congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Now I have um, a little presentation to make for each of them. One thing I encourage them to do is to develop their own devotional life each day of prayer and Bible study. And this is a devotional book for teens and a, a card. And Alex, okay, it's a certificate of confirmation. And this, I'm going to read, just read it to you. You have been instructed in the word of God and in the faith of the Christian church and having made public confession of faith in Jesus Christ and having promised to con continue in the baptismal covenant by living in accord with the gospel is hereby confirmed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Christian. Good job. Good job. It is a wonderful thing to see these young men um, come to this point in their Christian life where they can publicly speak without any hesitation about what they believe. And when you know these young men, as I have had the privilege of doing as their pastor, these young men will love the Lord Jesus their whole life, and they'll continue to serve him and honor him. And God has great in store for both of you, for both of you. And I will say this, I feel like as a pastor who is also a teacher who's worked with young people, I've seen so many young people that are in a desperate situation because they're not anchored to anything or anyone. There's so much instability in their personal lives. And it's, it's so good to see that these young men have an anchor, and the anchor's name is Christ Jesus. Amen. And that anchor will hold you no matter what confronts you in your life. Your life may be easy. It may have difficulties. It probably will. That's called living. But when you have Jesus Christ, that anchor's going to hold. That anchor's going to hold. So remember this day forever. And thank you, Reverend Diane. This sweet pastor 
worked with my boys uh, when they were just Cub Scouts. And uh, we have had a privilege of knowing Diane for a long time. And I knew she was the right one to actually confirm you in your Christian walk and faith. So again, let's give them a round of applause.